daughter. They gave. In, uh, in modern day Hebrew, we say that a person does something voluntarily, we say that's nidivut. He gives, he gives of himself. Shimu Malachim, listen to me, O you kings. Hazinu Rosenim. Rosenim is a, uh, a tyrant, a despot. Listen to me, you despot. You who trust in your might. <clears throat> you trust in your strength. Listen to me. Anochi la Hashem. I am going to sing only to God. Anochi Oshira. I sing only to the Rabboni Shalom. You have songs, which in effect she's doing is mocking the other songs of the world. You're, you have songs to valor. You have songs to your own strength. You have, you know, God save the king. A queen, as the case may be. Almost all national anthems have within themselves uh, a great deal of posturing, because that's the uh, that's that's why it's the national anthem. The difference between the Star Spangled Banner, let us say, and America the Beautiful, and God Bless America is a great difference. There's three, three completely different messages that come across. But the Star Spangled Banner is the national anthem. And uh, part of the argument that it always existed regarding the uh, national anthem of Israel, uh, Tikva, uh, was based uh, not only on the fact that its author was a uh, practically an apostate Jew who uh, really had mental problems. And uh, once he used the film on a dog, so uh, because of that, uh, it's not hard to understand why religious Jews would be loath to uh, acknowledge his poem as the national anthem of the Jewish people. But aside from that, even if the person himself would be neutral, uh, the, the, the song itself says nothing about the Jewish people. It doesn't represent uh, Jewish history or Jewish thought or Jewish destiny or Jewish belief. And therefore, uh, it's a purely secular poem. And there's a great deal of resentment, as you can imagine, of having a purely secular anthem to describe the Jewish state, especially the Jewish state after 1900 years of exile. So uh, it's not, uh, as in all areas, it is not a cut and dried matter. It's not, not easy to vote up or down. And, as to whether or not, uh, and also at the top it all off naturally is the music is taken from the from Smetna, from Moldau, and uh, so you got you know I mean you have you have a non-Jewish national anthem in every sense of the word, but most Jewish music is non-Jewish. I don't know if there's any. I mean, if you listen to W E V D, you're convinced. Almost all Jewish music is non-Jewish. And therefore, I imagine it would be hard to find what Jewish music is. But, it, but, but it's a blatant thing to take, you know, to take a, to lift a piece of classical music and just use it. Whereas all other national anthems, one way or another, have, uh, have music that's special to it. So that combination, the author, the theme of the poem, the music, and the fact that none of it is Jewish uh, always uh, has rubbed a certain nerve raw. And uh, that's, you know, so among all the other problems, that's also one of the problems. That eventually there will undoubtedly be a different national anthem, I am convinced, no matter what happens, because it doesn't do the job for anybody. But but again, it's such a, it's an issue that really, uh, it's a peripheral issue to the main issue. But that's what she is saying here. 
she says, Dvora, that you have songs also. You have songs of triumph, songs of victory. But our songs are different. Anochi la Hashem, Anochi Ashira. My song is to God. And that is again a uh, a parallelism to the song of Moshe. Ashira la Hashem, ki go go. Moshe begins his song also with the phrase Ashira la Hashem. I am singing unto God. So here we are. The song of God is what is paramount. Azamer la Hashem, elokei Yisrael. I will sing to the God, the God of Israel. I sing to Hashem, the God of Israel. Now here you have uh, the imagery of Jewish poetry is to repeat phrases. Hashem, Moshe says in Shir uh, We see uh, in the uh, in the Hallel we say Yemin uh, Hashem. And then we say, you mean Hashem again?